Congratulations, you've landed your principal job. But let's get real for just one second because nobody's gonna hand you a manual that will help to explain the overwhelming expectations, the difficult conversations, and the pressure you're gonna feel to prove yourself. Are you feeling the weight yet? Well, don't worry, because in this episode today, I'm gonna give you a tip. The one thing that will help you jumpstart your start as a principal and help make that transition smooth. Grab your pen, grab your piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes because this journey is going to start right now. Hey everybody, Dr. Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher all the way to the office of superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, welcome in and thank you so much for being here. And while you're here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our latest episodes or latest content. The biggest mistake that I know I made as I think about my previous experiences, I think about coming up through the ranks when I first became a principal, the biggest mistake that I made was not understanding the power and the importance of building trust within the organization. But I learned real fast about when there's a lack of trust, when there's a lack of belief in the things that we say as leaders, it makes our jobs difficult. It makes getting results slow. And most importantly, it impacts the culture and the climate of the school that you're leading. And so if there was one piece of advice that I would give you where you want to focus your attention, you want to focus your time, your effort, and your energy. It's in building trust across the organization from you to your administrative team, to your leadership team, to your faculty, to your staff, to your parents, to your students. Building trust across the organization is probably the single most important leadership thing that you can do as a principal. And we want to really focus on how do we make you a better principal as a new as a new principal, as a veteran principal. If you haven't taken stock of just how important it is to build that organizational trust, then I'd ask you to step back and reflect and think for just a moment, how am I building trust? How am I appearing? Am I appearing trustworthy to the people that I lead? Am I following through on the commitments that I make? Is my word, my bond, is my word gold? These are all things I want you to think about. So in today's episode, we're going to spend some time kind of breaking down why trust is so important and giving some concrete strategies around how you can build this culture of trust, this culture of belief, this culture of confidence, and it all starts with the word and the practice of building trust. So let's jump right in with the very first strategy around how we build this really important characteristic and this really important principle of trust. So the very first thing as a leader that we want to make sure that people know about us is that we are going to listen and we're going to be present and visible. So active listening and high levels of visibility is the very first way that we can build trust across the organization. When people know that when they bring something to us, that we're hearing them, we're listening, we're validating. And even more so when they see us ever present, moving around the campus, moving in and out of classrooms, at events, at activities, supporting, cheering on what's happening across the organization. These are critically important aspects of building organizational trust. You want to walk your campus. You want to spend time connecting with people in authentic ways, because as you walk around campus, you're creating that high level of visibility, but you're also creating opportunities for you to listen and hear the perspective of people, hear the perspective of the people that you lead, hear the perspective of people who need and want to believe in you and your leadership. 
So create those opportunities by moving around. Hold some office hours, hold some open door periods of time where you'll make yourself available to answer questions, to field questions and concerns. Just make yourself visible. I remember the very first principal that I worked for, she had her office was directly off of the quad of the campus. And that door that opened to the quad and opened to the lunch area and to the general area where all the students and staff were, was always open. Inviting people in, inviting people into having that conversation. You know, as myself, as a practicing superintendent right now to this day, holding all of my meetings, as many meetings as possible outside of the superintendent's office, out at campuses, in people's classrooms, in other people's offices, creating opportunities for visibility, the community sees me, our students see me, our staff sees me. And then creating that opportunity to have active, effective listening by sitting with somebody and giving them our time, giving them our energy, giving them the space to be able to share, and then really listening effectively to understand, to understand what's happening and why it's important. These are the very first things that we can do if we want to build a culture and a climate of trust. And I would encourage you to use these strategies because it's a great way to change the vision, change the view, change the perspective or the lens that people may have about us as leaders. The more visible and the more accessible we are, the more we're going to build those opportunities to develop trust with folks. So active listening and visibility are the very first strategies about building trust. All right, let's talk about strategy number two. When we think about building trust across our organization as a new principal, as a practicing principal, as a veteran principal, have clear and consistent communication. Communicating is hard. And I know in other videos that are on this channel, I talk about the challenges and the complexity of being able to effectively communicate. We work hard every single day as leaders of trying to be better at communicating. The number one thing that you have to communicate as a leader is to communicate effectively and actively your vision, where you see the organization going, where you want to take the organization. You want to share that vision. You want to cast it often, as often as possible. We'll be talking about where you want to take the organization, how you want to get there who you need help and assistance from in order to get there, because we don't do it alone. But casting your vision early and often will build trust because now people will know what they're chasing. Now people will know what they're striving to get to. And it's our job as leaders to shape that vision for them and help them see how we can realize it and then support them as they move towards getting there. Secondarily, if we wanna really effectively communicate, we've gotta be transparent. We gotta talk about how we make decisions. We gotta talk about, we gotta tell the stories and give the context and give the explanation and share the why behind the tough decisions that we make. The reason we get put in these jobs is to make critically important and many times overwhelmingly difficult decisions. That's why we take these roles on, but it's important to not make those decisions in a vacuum. People need information information gets like oxygen without it people begin to hallucinate hey i didn't make that up but i learned it from people long ago if people have access to information they will feel like they are in the loop when people don't have access to information they will begin to hallucinate and make up a reality that isn't even there they'll start to make up reasons in their head as to why you're not sharing information with them and why you're hiding things from them and you may not even be doing that however without being transparent and without sharing that information actively and often, then people feel out of the loop. And bad things happen when people feel like they're out of the loop. Assumptions. And we don't want that. So just be transparent. Be upfront. Share the information. Share the why. Cast your vision. As you create systems to effectively communicate, the better off the organization is going to be. 
the better off your staff will be. They'll feel supported. They'll feel empowered. They'll feel engaged. And a supported, empowered, and engaged staff creates supported, empowered, and engaged students, which creates a great school environment. So strategy number two is to create effective communication structures and systems. That's going to build trust across your organization. All right. So before we move to strategy number three, share with us in the comments below, what are one or two ways that you will either create transparency and effective communication or one or two ways that you will be visible across your campus? What are the strategies that you will put in place in order to be those things because you're committed to building a trustworthy organization and you're committed to being a trustworthy leader? Share that with us in the comments below. One or two ways you'll be an effective communicator or one or two ways you'll show high levels of visibility. Share that with us in the comments below and let's move to strategy number three. All right, let's talk about strategy number three. Strategy number three is keep your word. I was trying to think of some nifty or fun way to say it. Keep your word. If you make a promise, figure out a way to follow through on the commitments that you make. Because when you follow through on promises, this is the number one way to build trust. If you tell your staff you're going to do something, you got to follow through and do it. If you tell a student that you're going to do something, you got to follow through and do it. If you tell a parent that they can take to the bank that you're going to handle something that you discuss with them, you got to make sure that you do it. Because when we follow through, that builds confidence, that builds that builds our reputation in people's minds, then people believe that we are dependable and we're reliable. So when you make a promise, find ways to follow through and stay committed. The other thing is start small, find small little meaningful tasks, small little meaningful wins that you can get and you can show people progress. We can show them immediately. You asked for this, I'm delivering on this. Share those small wins with folks because that builds, again, it builds confidence, right? And it shows some traction. It shows people that you're committed to following through and making sure you see those commitments through. Because everybody wants the school to do well. And as the leader, people want you to do well as well. So build these systems and these structures so that way people can have that confidence and as their confidence builds, now the collective capacity of the organization also builds. And we start to see progress and we start to see momentum. Where there's a trustworthy organization, where there's a trustworthy leader, lots of information, lots of things are happening, results are happening, progress is moving, expectations are being met, but there's lots of evidence of good things moving forward. So these are three strategies for us to build trustworthy organizations and for all of my principals and aspiring principals and educational leaders and whether you're in education or you're not and you're in some other field be a trustworthy leader and these three strategies are not school only related these apply to any field of leadership be visible listen actively listen to people validate people and their concerns be a clear communicator. Make sure that people know what your vision is. Make sure that you're being transparent and keep your word. Make sure that people know that what you say, you will follow through. Keep your promises. Find ways to find small wins so you show people that you mean business and you're going to move in a positive direction. These are the things that we do to build a trustworthy organization. These are the things that I'm challenging you to find ways to do. As we move forward, we're going to continue to build the collective capacity of this, of this community. It's growing and it's getting bigger and it's getting more influential and more impactful. And I hear you in the comments in other videos saying, when are we getting more leadership content? It is coming. I'm listening to your thoughts. I'm listening to your responses. I'm listening to the feedback that you're giving me. And we're going to talk about leadership and we're going to build your capacity. We're going to give you tips, skills, knowledge, insights, give you hacks so you can be a darn good leader when given the opportunity.
You can be a darn good leader tomorrow by taking in this content and actualizing these strategies. I believe in you. I know you can do this. So as we move forward, make sure that you check the description below for more information on our coaching, mentoring, resources, all those things that can help continue to build your capacity. Check out the next video because the next video is going to continue to build on your leadership skills and your leadership abilities. We're building this community to 10,000 leaders, 10,000 educators who are going to have benefited from you and this community and all of our collective capacity. So thank you. If you made it to this point in the video, don't forget, like this, share it with a friend, send it to 10 friends. We want to just share it as much as possible. Until we see you on our next episode, check out this next video. Until we see you on our next episode, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Be well, everyone. Thanks.